I'm my mama's son. I keep trying to tell y'all that. There's going to be nobody that disrespect my mama's son. And that means your son. If your son a professional athlete and they disrespect them, send the video to me. I'm on their ass. I'm on their ass. Skip Bayless, you Dracula dead face bitch. Hey, thanks for watching Numbskull News, and today we're going to get into this Kwame Brown thing. Just came out of nowhere, and I became a huge fan of Kwame Brown just now. <laughs> just like over the last couple of days, man. I've been watching everything this dude has been posting. He's been setting fire to the world, napalm everywhere. And it's kind of great. <laughs> it's great for multiple reasons. I guess part of me is a little bit of a shit human. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I like to see some drama that has nothing to do with me, and I can just take some uh, enjoyment out of it. But on the other hand, uh, Kwame Brown, in case you don't know, he, he's a 12-year vet of the NBA, made about $65 million, pretty good career, but he was the number one overall pick, you know, the first high schooler ever to be picked, number one overall to go into the NBA at age 17, super young. And he never lived up to that status. Most people call him a bust. I've called him a bust. A lot of people have. Um, but I think we were wrong for doing so. I mean, the man did play 12 years in the league. You cannot stay 12 years anywhere unless you have some skill. You're, you're bringing some value to a team. And he did. He just didn't bring first, you know, number one overall pick type of value. And he knows that. Everyone knows that. But people have been basically screwing with him for 15 years. I mean, and keep in mind, he's been out of the league now for seven or eight years. And he's been hearing this shit forever, but, you know, he has never he's never said anything about it. Kwame's kind of kept to himself, you know? And that's, that's a strong man to be able to just not come back on everybody all the time. But you let it roll off your back. And that's what he's done. But now, uh, things have changed. Now he has, his kids are older. You know, they're on YouTube. They're watching stuff on their own. They're teenagers, I believe. And so now, because of that, he, he's had enough. He's not going to let his sons listen to other people drag him down and call him a loser and make fun of him. You know, he's got to defend himself for his sons. That's that's the way Kwame Brown's put it. And because of that, I, I don't blame him at all. I think most of the internet is on his side. And because of that... He's being able to set fire to everybody. So the whole thing began with the Up and Smoke podcast. I've only watched a little bit of it. A couple other NBA players that do that podcast, Matt Barnes and uh, Mr. Jackson, Stephen Jackson. So it's Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson. And uh, they had Miss Jeannie Buss on, who's the owner of the Lakers. And Kwame Brown used to play for the Lakers. And uh, he was traded off along with a couple other people. Uh, for another player. And uh, so she was talking about that trade. Or they were discussing the trade. And you know they were making a joke. Like oh it's really a two man trade. Like you know yeah you traded Kwame. But you know he don't count. It's, it's essentially what they're saying. So they disrespected him. And I guess they're used to being able to get away with that. Because Kwame never came back on anybody. About any of this stuff. You know. He's like, fine, whatever. You know, I got my money. I'm happy and all that. But, of course, it, things do change when your kids get older and they can start reading a lot of this bullshit that people are still on you about. It's one thing if it was 10 years ago and it died down and stopped and no one's giving them shit anymore. But the fact that it's still going on really bugged Kwame. So he came back at him with some big, you know, epic rant. And, and he didn't just go after those two. Those are the main ones, but, you know, he had a little something for Stephen A. Smith. Uh, he had something for Skip Bayless. What does he call him? Count Drac Dead Face? Count Dracula Face? <laughs> and the crazy thing is, you know, Kwame, you know, he was a talented basketball player. Not as talented as everyone thought he was going to be, but he was talented. However, his gift with his voice, his vocal talent of being able to talk, it's really, really good. It's really there. He is naturally gifted at being able to turn on a camera and talk to it. Well, way better than me. I mean, <laughs> I'm not talented at all. 
but uh, you know, like Matt Barnes and uh, uh, Steph, Stephen Jackson, they're, they're, they they could talk. They're pretty good, but Kwame's superior. He just is. He's better. He's quicker on his feet. He's got a quick sense of humor. He's well read, well spoken. Even though he doesn't have anything beyond a high school education, uh, he comes across as a very intelligent guy. Even though he cusses a lot, throws out a lot of n bombs. However. You get between all that, you see a lot of points, and he just went at them hard and went at a lot of people hard. Here's the crazy thing. This is this is the crazy thing. Okay, now apparently Charlemagne the God is good friends with uh, Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson, and so he interjected himself, you know, on on his radio show, The Breakfast Club. Um. And for a little background, I'm a I'm a fan of Charlemagne the God. I've been a fan for a while. I uh, first heard of him when he was in some kind of beef with Jason Whitlock, and I've been a big Jason Whitlock fan for a long time. And so there was some kind of beef. Uh, Jason Whitlock had a show on FS1. I was watching that show. He talked about it. I'm like, who the hell is Charlemagne the God? So I looked him up, saw a couple of videos of The Breakfast Club. I'm like, okay, he's all right. Then I checked out The Brilliant Idiots. And I'm like, dude, I really like Charlemagne the God, even though he's ripping a dude I really like. So now I'm, I've been fans with both of theirs. You know, that, that's kind of how it goes. You, <laughs> It's just a weird way to get introduced to somebody. But, you know, I, I became a fan of Charlemagne the God. And uh, I don't agree with everything he says. I don't agree with everything Jason Whitlock says. I mean, if you agree, if you find someone out there, you agree with 100% of everything they say, then you don't think for yourself. But I think for myself. So I don't agree with 100% of everything that anybody says. All right. However, if you could throw down a well-read logical argument and be kind of entertaining and have some talent while you do it, then I'll listen. You know, that's why I watched the Jimmy Dore show. I'm not a progressive, but I find him entertaining and he makes salient points and he's passionate and it entertains me. So I, I watch it. So Charlemagne the God uh, makes some weird point. Um, what he does is that he tells these guys, Hey, you need to leave Kwame Brown alone. Everyone needs to leave Kwame Brown alone because his father, uh, killed a woman with an ax handle in his, in prison and his brother killed somebody then killed himself and other people in jail. So Kwame comes from some violent people. So y'all got to leave him alone. And I think that was his weird way of trying to make the peace. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Um, but it really pissed Kwame Brown off. And at first, I, I wasn't understanding why he was so pissed off about it. But then, you know, through watching Kwame Brown's videos, uh, what I found out was that his son didn't know that about his grandfather. His son didn't know that really negative history of some of their family members. And that's how that's how his kids find out. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. And on top of that, you're insinuating that Kwame Brown's a violent man because there's violent people in his family. And he's like, that has nothing to do with me. You know, you know, his father didn't really raise him, and his father had a kid outside of the marriage, and that was the brother that did something violent and then killed himself. And he's like, dude, you're putting all this crap on me, and you're trashing my name, basically, so... What he did was, okay, fine. You you want to throw all my dirt from, you know, from my family's dirt out there in the open for everyone to see, including my kids. Uh, I want to throw your skeletons out in the road. And that's what he did. Because I had no idea that Charlemagne the God had some kind of a rape allegation on him. And it wasn't just an allegation. He pled down to a lesser charge to a misdemeanor. So he didn't do any time in jail. But he did plead... To a lesser charge, guilty of of a lesser charge. And what you find out is, when he was 22, he had some kind of sexual deal with a 15 year old. And I say deal because I, I mean, according to the the, the quote unquote victim here, there is a victim. Uh, according to that child, she was raped. No ifs ands or buts about it. And now the police. Found that the girl was intoxicated, highly intoxicated. So that's not good. So you got a 15-year-old who's highly intoxicated, 
being 15, she can't get alcohol for herself. Somebody had to give it to her. And then someone had, and now they knew he had sex with her. But they didn't call it rape. They call it like felonious or, or whatever. I don't know what the exact charge is. But it's a lesser charge than, because it's not actually rape. It's like felonious vaginal, <laughs> it's some kind of, it's rape. <laughs> okay, that's... That's the charge. It's, they just use a longer terminology for it. But I had no idea about this. And now, and now, when I was sitting down thinking about it, I'm like, well, I haven't been a fan of Charlemagne the God for that long. Maybe a year or two. And uh, maybe this is something he's spoken on already. You know, uh, through a podcast or a, a book, an interview. Who knows? Maybe he's spoken on this stuff before. However, his lawyer sent a cease and desist order to Kwame Brown saying, you got to stop talking about that. And what that means, a cease and desist order, means if you keep saying this, this stuff, then I can sue you for damages. Um, that is not a good look for Charlemagne the God. All right, because he, look, to his credit, he came on his show, The Breakfast Club, and issued an apology, you know, uh, it didn't seem like it was, a, it was, it was obviously a prepared statement, but I, don't, I didn't see anything written down. I think he, you know, tried to speak from the heart there. He's got a personality that I like, so I want to believe, uh, that apology. Um, Kwame Brown has basically told him to shove it up his ass. He <laughs> come and take it. Uh, that's his right. That's his right. He's still raw. He's still pissed about it. Um... But he's going all in saying that, you know, he doesn't know why this dude has a radio show when he's a no good rapist. I mean, this Me Too thing is still going on. And they they have dug into people's past before and got them canceled. So this is the kind of thing right now, uh, the kind of threat that Charlemagne the God is under. Is he going to be get canceled? I, I, I don't know. All I know is that a, I'm a fan of Charlemagne the God. I know, I know I'm just a old fat redneck but uh i i do watch his content and now i don't know if i can anymore you know i got a 15 year old daughter if anybody is i don't anybody doing anything even if it's just a misdemeanor you know i'm not thinking about prison <laughs> or going to jail any of that stuff when it comes to what I'm going to do to you if you mess with my daughter. Uh, that's just the man speaking out of me. And I'm old school like that. You touch my kid, I'm going to touch you. And I'm going to touch you a lot. So I, I just don't have a sense of humor about it. I don't like, well, you know, whatever. Uh, if he's, if he was guilty of something. And, you know, he really needs to address it. I mean, just... If for no other reason for his fans, you know, because like I said, I, I, I'm not the probably not the most passionate Charlemagne the God fan, but I'm sure there are a lot of them out there, you know, but I am a fan. But if this doesn't get addressed, like if he just tries to, because that's what it seems like he's trying to sweep it under the rug. And if that's what he does, I'm not going to watch any more Charlemagne the God stuff. I'm just going to unsubscribe to anything I'm subscribed to, like the Brilliant Idiots, and peace out. I just don't, you know. Which sucks because I'm an Andrew Schultz fan as well, but I'm just not going to have anything to do with it if that's, it turns out he raped a 15 year old, you know, and they got a lesser charge on some bullshit and he's had this thing stashed away for a long time. No one's wanted to bring it up or talk about it. And until he crossed the wrong dude who wasn't afraid to throw it out there. You know, he, he wasn't afraid of any kind of retribution or lawyers or afraid of losing his podcast because he doesn't have one. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at. <laughs> so, but I'm going to hold off on just, you know, writing off Charlemagne the God just yet. You know, I, I think he needs, to, he needs to address it. He needs to be given the chance to address it. You know, and I hope he does. You know, uh, I like to hear what he has to say about it. Because depending on what he says, it depends on whether, you know, look, I'm one person. It doesn't matter if I unsubscribe to something, but I can give, guarantee to you, there's a lot of fans out there he's going to lose. And he's got a lot of corporate sponsors. 
All right, he's on corporate airwaves with the Breakfast Club. And these people don't screw around anymore. And so I, I don't know. Maybe they're telling him to shut up. Don't say anything about it. I don't know. You know, all this will just, this will just go away. It, hopefully it'll just blow over. May not. It may not. I mean, the people with the pitchforks, man, they're, in these days are always right around the corner waiting. <laughs> they're always just, they're waiting. You know, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying he's Bill Cosby. I'm not saying Charlemagne's Bill Cosby. I just don't know. I, I don't know the circumstances behind uh, this incident that happened with a 15-year-old girl. I don't know everything. I definitely don't know his side, uh, Charlemagne's side. Don't know. So that needs to be heard. Hopefully he'll address that. But uh, yeah, I am a, a a huge Kwame Brown fan now, and uh, oh his 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 uh, YouTube channel. What was it? Uh, Kwame Brown's Bus Life. <laughs> that is a genius title. This is the dude who said, you know what? I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to embrace it. At least you know as much as of it as much as I can. I'm going to embrace it and use it. If you haven't seen this stuff, this Kwame Brown stuff, you got to check it out, man. It is thoroughly, thoroughly entertaining, <laughs> and he's got a gift. He has a gift. All right. Well, that's all I got on that. I'll be back with some other crap later. Bye.